Let's flash back to the year 2013, where the Harlem Shake took over the world, Flappy Bird was actively making people commit mass genocide on their smartphones, and Vine existed. But if you went to check out the Percy Jackson community, you'd find... Let's see how far we go. Let's see how far we go. This was the year where Percy Jackson took over. It was an era that fortified this franchise into the stratosphere, with fans everywhere attending Percy Jackson events, memes were appearing in every single social media format that you can think of on the internet, and the second Percy Jackson movie released to theaters worldwide. But we don't talk about that because it was trash. The main thing steamrolling this love for Percy Jackson at this time was the latest installment in the franchise, The House of Hades. A novel that to this day is the number one favorited book by fans and critics alike. But what made this story so great? And what does this have anything to do with the latest story in the franchise, The Sun and the Star? Well... <laughs> The House of Hades is the story that solidified Percy Jackson as one of the biggest franchises in recent memory. It reshaped not just what a Percy Jackson story is, but also changed middle grade stories for the rest of the world. Middle grade books, if you don't know, are stories written for ages 8 to 12, so that means the majority talk down to readers. And it makes sense why middle grade authors want to keep it safe. They have a brand and reputation to keep. But the House of Hades said screw that, and is a middle grade story that is lighthearted that any reader of any age could enjoy. But it also touches on darker themes that no middle grade author had tried before. Darker themes as in throwing teenagers into hell, mentally scarring our favorite characters, characters, loads of gory imagery, and slapping the children book logo on it. But this brings up the topic for today with... Almost a decade later after The House of Hades, and The Sun and the Star is released. The newest story in the Percy Jackson franchise follows up on the adventure in House of Hades. With all the new reboots nowadays, most notably Star Wars and Marvel, have ever expanded their universes by constantly making movies and TV shows to entice fans with the new stories that they have crafted to keep their audiences entertained with said universes. The upsides of this is that if you love those franchises and want to see more from it, then you will receive more from it. However, the downside to this is that there has been a clear general consensus that the quality of most of these movies and shows have been pretty... pretty lame to say the least. I wouldn't go as far as saying it ruins the original content like most people try to say, but it definitely isn't cool when a franchise you love keeps pumping out content for the sake of shilling out those dollar bills. So when I hear we're getting a continuation to House of Hades, one of the most influential books in the past decade, I wouldn't say scared is the word to use. <laughs> okay, maybe it is. But then, The Sun and the Star came out, and I read the whole thing. And HOLY sh- The thing that ticks me off about reboots nowadays is that they don't balance well. They either stray too far from the original material that they're expanding from and create something entirely different from what we're used to, making it alien to its roots, or it stays too close to the original material, making it nostalgic for regular consumers, but overall leaving a bland taste in the audience's mouths because it feels too familiar. Rarely is there ever a balanced story in this genre. And I gotta say, The Sun and the Star is that balance. You can describe the entire Percy Jackson franchise as a lot of things. Comedic, action-packed, annoying cliffhangers. But the word I'm looking for is consistent. No matter the evolution of the franchise to Heroes of Olympus, to Trials of Apollo, now all the way to the Sun and the Star, it's a franchise that does a very good job of staying familiar enough that no matter which point in the timeline you decide to indulge in, you'll get an experience that all the books can provide. The Sun and the Star is no different. The consistency in many of our stories nowadays are a weird amalgamation of what the original was intended to be. The reason for this is due to the constant change in creative visions from episode to episode, or season to season, or movie to movie. Now, this isn't always a bad thing. If you were to theoretically get some of the best storytellers in the world to create a cinematic universe and they all focused on different aspects of that universe, while also building up to a big cinematic finale that puts to use all the talent that those storytellers have told intended for said finale, Finale, you can get a franchise that becomes one of the best selling in the world. This exists within Marvel's phases 1 to 3. 
However, the reason that worked, the reason the multiple creator ideology was able to thrive there, was because there was always a clear creative vision. Iron Man was always going to transition into Endgame, and what made that inevitable transition work was the creative vision of a single brain. In this case, Marvel Studios. In our case, with the Sun and the Star, Rick Riordan, the author of Percy Jackson, has written every story in Percy's universe and has full control over the entire franchise. This is the reason Percy Jackson works. It allows for Rick to keep his stories familiar to his readers, while also adhering to his constant improvements throughout his years of writing. This evolution of writing is ever prevalent in the two main characters of The Sun and the Star, Nico D'Angelo and Will Solace. Nico is the highlight of The Sun and the Star. He is one of the most loved and well-established characters in the Percy Jackson franchise, who's been around since 2007. Out of every character in this franchise, he was the one who deserved to have a story centering around him. But even with this being the case, I was still wondering before The Sun and the Star came out, if a story about Nico was even necessary. I love Nico, don't get me wrong, but let me ask you a question. Would this story add anything to anything about Nico that we haven't already gotten before? This was something that was left for me to wonder until the story was released to the world. And I'll say this, Nico to say it the very simplest words to describe him is complex. He's a kid who's been through so much crap that most people won't go through their entire lifetime. And the sun and the star really allows us to, and I don't say this lightly, finally have a conclusion to his journey that was established 16 years ago. I'll say this without spoiling too much of the finale, but Nico achieves something that we as human beings work every single day of our lives to obtain. True happiness. Not a rushed happily ever after that was spat out to give us the audience a false sense of satisfaction for a beloved legacy character, but true well-written and hard-earned happiness. It's the best possible ending for Nico. And Will Solace, a character that existed in the franchise beforehand and was more prominent later on. But I'm gonna be honest with you, even after all these novels, even after years of people loving this character, Will never had enough screen time. But in The Sun and the Star, I was proven wrong. Will isn't a fighter, he's a healer. And sometimes, that's not enough. Healing isn't always about putting a bandage on something and calling it a day like many people try to often do to solve their problems. Healing is a complex concept and it takes time for things to heal. But he lets his personality shine through and he helps Nico throughout his journey so many times that Will ends up being one of the most compelling parts in The Sun and the Star. And of course, you can't talk about this book without talking about Marco Shiro. The Sun and the Star is written 50-50 by both Rick and Mark, and I don't know who wrote what, and it keeps me up at night. There are two different writing styles actually blended together and balanced enough for the story that it felt like one writer, which again, on my point earlier in this video, is all about balance. That's what this story did throughout its entire 462 pages. Wow, that's a big book. I read through this fast. Holy crap. Suffice to say, The Sun and the Star never gave me that feeling of, this goes too far, or this doesn't go far enough. All of it felt that it belonged and made sense for this universe. More stories adapting legacy content should be trying to imitate the formula that this story has established. It's why The Sun and the Star is a deserved continuation to not just the House of Hades and the Percy Jackson franchise, but to storytelling as a whole. The Sun and the Star adheres to honoring the beloved Percy Jackson franchise while expanding its scope of changing the content applicable in middle grade stories, while keeping the consistent quality of said franchise as a sequel that balances the requirements any given sequel needs, while giving a story that for once in this franchise is allowing another writer to be fully on board with the creative vision, and overall creates its own individual narrative that does justice to two characters who have needed a story centering around them for only almost a decade now. Because, who knows, maybe The Sun and the Star will not only influence the middle grade industry as its predecessor, The House of Hades had once done, but maybe, just maybe, influence the entirety of the entertainment industry to do better. We are witnessing the evolution of the entirety of storytelling.